the Gauss-Jordan method. So the Gauss-Jordan method is yet another technique for solving an AX equals B problem. Interestingly, it can also be used to calculate matrix inverses. Another thing I'll mention, this is a very good method that we can solve linear algebra problems like this by hand. And we can even solve moderately large problems by hand, or this can also be done by a computer code. So step one, here's our ordinary three by three matrix, and we would like to solve this using the Gauss-Jordan method. The first thing we are going to do is construct what's called an augmented matrix. We can think of this as a block matrix. And what we'll do, we'll construct this augmented matrix. And on the left is our A matrix. And on the far right, we've inserted this column vector, our B column vector. So we now have a sort of three by four augmented matrix. But just think of it as a block matrix with A on the left and B on the right. That's step one, form the augmented augmented matrix. The next step, we're going to normalize this top row. And we do that by dividing by the diagonal element. And when we do that, that places a one in the diagonal position. And of course, the other elements we're dividing by a one one. We have to do that all the way across. So Rather than keep writing this as A12 divided by A11, we're just going to write this as a new A12, A13, and B1. And that's what the apostrophe stands for. So it's a new value that came from our old values. And here's how we calculate these new values. So we have a new matrix now that has a one in this diagonal position. Having a one in the diagonal position makes it easier so that we can eliminate X1 from rows two and three. So the way we can do that is we can calculate a new row two as the old row two times A21 times row one. And then when we subtract row one times the A21 from row two, we get a zero in the X1 position. Likewise, we can say that the new row three is the old row three minus row one times A31. That puts a zero in this position. So far, this is looking a lot like the naive Gauss elimination. And in fact, it is, except here, we're not going to go for a triangular matrix here. We're going to go for an identity matrix with ones going down the diagonal. So similar steps, but a slightly different goal. Okay, so having done that, we end up with the large expressions for what would go here in our matrix. So here's what those expressions would be. Here's the, the new A's and B's for the new row two and the new A's and B's for the new row three and how we calculate it from the A's and B's from the previous iteration. So all we've done now, we have a one in the diagonal position in row one and zeros uh, in every other position in that first column. Now we'll go on to the second row and we normalize it by dividing the whole row by this new recalculated value of A22. And so we see that we've done that here. And of course, if we divide zero by A22, so that stays zero. And here's how we would calculate our new values. Rather than keep writing it as these expressions, we're now gonna write it as an A23 double prime to tell us this is now a new A3 from the second iteration and a new B2 from the second iteration. And here's how we calculate it from the values we had at our first iteration, or the iteration when we were working on the first row. Given now that we have a one in the diagonal position of the second row, it becomes easy to figure out what to multiply the second row by so that we can subtract that from the first and second row so that we get zeros in these two positions. And in fact, these are the two constants that we'll multiply by. So the new row one is the old row one minus row two times the A12. That puts a zero in this position and also gives us a new A and B over here. And here's how we, we calculate that for row one. Now the new row three, the new row three is the old row three minus A32 times the row two. That puts a zero in this position. And here we have now we have new A's and B's, and here's how we calculate those. 
So we're starting to look like an identity matrix. And what's different than the, the Gauss elimination is we're not going for a triangular matrix here. We're going for an identity matrix. So we have a one in the diagonal position, the rest zeros. One in the diagonal position and the rest zeros. And we're going to do the same thing for that third column. So we move on to the third row and we will normalize that row by dividing by A33. That puts a one in this position and we get a new B over here. So the new B3, now we have the triple apostrophe for the third row iteration. Here's how we calculate that. Given a one in this diagonal position, that makes it easy to know what to multiply row three by so that we can subtract that from rows one and two in order to get zeros in the X3 position. So the new row one is the old row one minus A13 times the row three. That puts a zero in this position. New row two is old row two minus A23 times row three. And that puts a zero in this position. And now we have these new values of B and here's how we calculate those. And the triple apostrophe tells us that's from our third row iteration. So here's our augmented matrix now. We have the identity matrix where we used to have the A matrix and we have all new values of B here that came out of this process. That last column here, these Bs, this is the solution to the problem. We had to extract that out. Let's give an example here. So we have an AX equals B problem. The X is what we're trying to find. Here's the A matrix and here's the B matrix. Let's find the X column vector. So the first step is to form the augmented matrix. And so we insert the A matrix on the left and our B matrix on the right. We will normalize the first row putting a one in the diagonal position. Well, there already was a one in the diagonal position, so we didn't have much to do there. We'll then eliminate X1 from the second and third rows by multiplying row one by the right number so that when we subtract row one from row two and three, we get zeros in this position. We actually didn't even have to do anything for the second row, we already had a zero there. So the third row was the only one necessary to do that. So now we have zeros in the X2 and X3 positions in that first column. Now we move on to the second row. We normalize the second row, which had a four in the diagonal position. So we will divide that row by four. Now that there's a one here, that makes it easy to know what to multiply the second row by because we're gonna subtract that from rows one and three. And we do that in a way to eliminate X2. So we now have zeros in the X1 and X3 position because we've subtracted row two from it. Then the very last thing, we're normalizing the diagonal element in the third row, which was a negative 2.75. And so here's what we get for our new third row. Having a one in that diagonal position makes it easy that we can subtract it from rows one and two so that we get zeros in the X1 and X2 position. And at this point, we're almost done our process. We have the identity matrix over here. So what's remaining in this right column is our answer. So we pull that out and we say that is our answer X. Now here's a big warning. It is a classic mistake when I teach this and I give a homework or a test that the student gives this as the answer. That is not the answer. That's just one of your intermediate steps. You absolutely must pull out this column and write it this way, this is your answer. This is the augmented matrix that kind of has your answer in there. But if you answer with this, I'm going to assume you don't really know what the answer is. So extract your answer, this is the answer. This identity matrix is not part of the answer. That was just your, your intermediate step to find the answer. So here's the algorithm for any size matrix. And this can be done by hand, or it can be done with a computer program. So in the beginning, we need our A and B. That comes in as inputs. We somehow define those. Given those, the first thing we'll do is we'll construct our augmented matrix. We'll call the augmented, augmented matrix U, which has A on the left and B on the right. And so the MATLAB code to do that is just in square brackets, A and B. And as long as these have compatible size, and hopefully they do, or it's not a valid problem, 
that calculates our augmented matrix U very easily. Next, we set up a big for loop. So you can think of like for little m equals one to big M, where big M is the number of rows in the matrix U. Step one, normalize the mth row. So we'll take the entire row and divide by its diagonal element. And here's the MATLAB code for doing that. We're going to take the, the entire mth row. So here's which row we're in. We're saying the entire row equals the entire row divided by that row's diagonal element. Then we set up another for loop for little r equals one to big M. However, we're going to skip the mth row. Uh, because we don't want to subtract the mth row from itself, we want to subtract the mth row from all other rows. So here's how we do that. We have the rth row, the entire row. So the rth row equals the rth row minus the constant that we need to multiply the mth row by so that we'll get a zero in that position. So we do that through all rows of the matrix. At the very end, we absolutely must do this. Here's our final augmented matrix, which will have the identity matrix to the left and our answer on the right. We extract our answer. So we're extracting the entire column. And which column is it? It's the M plus one column because the size of the matrix A is M. So if we were to extract the nth column, that would be the, the column that has all zeros and a one at the very bottom. So the answer is just to the right of that. So we add one and we get our answer. And that's it. That's very easy to do by hand. And it's also very easy to write a computer program to do this. We can modify this a little bit to find matrix inverses. We've discussed this in the context of calculating the solution to AX equals V, but here's the difference. So we just define an A now because we want its inverse. Our augmented matrix will be A on the left as usual, but now, instead of having a column vector B, there's another matrix. It's the identity matrix, the same size as A. So we go ahead and we perform Gauss, the Gauss-Jordan method on that. We iterate through all the rows until we have the identity matrix in this position. And when we do that, what happens to be in the right is now the inverse of A. So a simple little hack, it's all the same steps as the, the Gauss-Jordan method for solving AX equals B, but we have identity matrix in place of B, and in the end, We'll extract that as the inverse of the matrix. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.